Hey guys, welcome to Spec Transfer and to Topic 3.1.5.1, Structure of DNA and RNA from the AQA A-Level Biology Specification. As always, let's start with a look at our specification. First of all, we'll start off with an introduction to DNA and RNA. We should know that ribosomes are formed from RNA and proteins. Then we should know that DNA and RNA are polymers of nucleotides, and we should know the structure of a single nucleotide. We should know the final structure of a DNA double helix, and that an RNA molecule is a relatively short polynucleotide chain. Finally, the specification says that we should be able to appreciate that the relative simplicity of DNA led many scientists to doubt that it carried the genetic code. So let's make a start. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. RNA stands for ribonucleic acid. They are both important information-carrying molecules. DNA holds genetic information in all living cells, whereas RNA transfers genetic information from DNA to ribosomes as well as other functions which we'll learn about later. DNA and RNA are polymers of nucleotides, hence they're called polynucleotides. Here we have the structure of one nucleotide, also called a mononucleotide. First we have a phosphate group, which is bound to the 5' prime end of a pentose sugar, pentose meaning it contains 5 carbon atoms. The pentose sugar can either be deoxyribose in DNA or ribose in RNA. This is bound to a nitrogen-containing organic base, organic meaning that it contains carbon. In DNA, this base can either be adenine, thymine, cytosine or guanine, and in RNA, the thymine is replaced by uracil. Note that the phosphates, pentose sugar and base are all joined together by condensation reactions. Nucleotides themselves can be joined together by condensation reactions between the phosphate group of one nucleotide and the pentose sugar of another. This forms a phosphodiester bond between the two nucleotides, which consists of one phosphate group and two ester bonds. The chain of sugars and phosphates is known as the sugar phosphate backbone. So let's have a look at the structure of DNA. DNA consists of two DNA polynucleotide strands, which are joined together by hydrogen bonds between complementary base pairs. Complementary meaning that specific bases pair with each other. The base adenine is complementary with thymine, and two hydrogen bonds form between these bases. Cytosine is complementary with guanine, and three hydrogen bonds form between these bases. Remember to always give the full name of nucleotides. I've just abbreviated them for simplification purposes. Due to complementary base pairing, the quantity of adenine is the same as thymine, and the quantity of cytosine is the same as guanine. In an exam, for example, you may be given the percentage of adenine, and then you'd have to deduce that the percentage of thymine is the same as that of adenine. The two DNA strands are antiparallel, which means that they run in opposite directions. One strand runs in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction, whilst the other runs in the 3' prime to 5' prime direction. The two antiparallel strands twist around each other to form a double helix. Let's move on to a bit of history. At first, scientists doubted that DNA could actually carry the genetic code because it has a simple chemical composition. Some argued that genetic information must be carried by proteins, which are more chemically varied. However, in 1953, experiments showed that DNA was the true carrier of the genetic code. This was also when Watson and Crick determined the structure of DNA. So, how does DNA structure relate to function? The two DNA polynucleotide strands are only joined together by relatively weak hydrogen bonds, meaning that the strands can separate during DNA replication. The base pairs are protected from being corrupted by being within the helical cylinder of the sugar phosphate backbone. Finally, DNA is a very large molecule, so it can carry lots of genetic information. Next we'll move on to RNA, which is much shorter than DNA. RNA is made from a single polynucleotide chain. There are three main types of RNA that we need to know about. mRNA transfers genetic information from DNA to ribosomes. tRNA is involved in protein synthesis, and ribosomal RNA, rRNA, makes up part of the ribosome structure along with proteins. Great, that would be the structure of DNA and RNA covered. We know that DNA and RNA are important information-carrying molecules, and that in all living cells, DNA holds genetic information and RNA transfers genetic information from DNA to ribosomes. We also know that ribosomes are formed from RNA and proteins. Then we have learned that DNA and RNA are polymers of nucleotides, and we have covered the structure of a single nucleotide. 
we know the final structure of a DNA double helix and that an RNA molecule is a relatively short polynucleotide chain. We have also covered a little history about the discovery of DNA as the carrier of the genetic code, knowing that at first the relative simplicity of DNA led many scientists to doubt that it carried the genetic code. That would be it for now guys, thanks for watching, please subscribe, comment, next time we will be covering DNA replication.